All right, uh, we're back here and we're now getting ready to start turn number six. Uh, just a couple of things very quickly from turn number five to go back over. Um, down here, Private Goldstein was out of ammo. And I didn't do anything wrong, but I forgot one of the main rules of the game, which is you, you get all three of those steps in step four of the action phase. And I forgot step number three, that I can choose to change my order back to duck back. Had I done that after he received his out of ammo, uh, at the very least, he would have been much more protected. Now, it didn't work out so badly. He's all right. He's good to go. Uh, but it should also be noted I, I had that option. The uh, enemy character does not have that option. Enemy characters cannot voluntarily choose duck back. Okay? So I probably should have done that. Additionally, I made the comment at the time, and it's wrong. Uh, Corporal Thomas made a shot that uh, took down that enemy character there. He's using a grease gun, which means he gets three fires. He took him out on the first uh, fire. And I said, well, he doesn't have to do the other ones after that. That's technically incorrect. He should have rolled for those other shots because of the low ammo and no ammo possibilities. And so I'm actually just going to give him two quick rolls to see if he gets a nine on either of them. And he does not, so we're not going to worry about it. It actually isn't going to come into play here anyway uh, with the plans I have for him over the next couple of turns. And that was really the only things in turn number five. So we're at turn number six. We're getting very close to the end of the game. It's a seven turn game. We only have five remaining enemy characters on the board. And one of those is wounded. So let's get going here on uh, the sequence of play for step number or for turn number six. The friendly card phase. I don't have any cards, so I need to draw one. Here is the card I draw. It's card number 46. It's the one I'm going to be using for uh, uh, initiative, and it's also an order card. So when I play it, I normally would have to go ahead and play the order on it as well. But as it turns out, it's an event, and events don't take place here in this scenario. So I've got my card. There uh, were no planning orders last turn. There's uh, not too many cards, so we need to go ahead and play. So I'll go ahead and play this card to the initiative track. The initiative values for this turn will be Charlie team with 36, Baker team with 70. And again, there is an order or there, uh, and, and, and it has an event, but because it's an event and this scenario doesn't use events, doesn't matter. So we go on to the next phase, which is step two, friendly orders. Go ahead and supply orders to the team. So what I'm going to do up here with Corporal Thomas is I'm actually going to uh, uh, apply the sprint order. And you can see down here it's got numbers in every impulse, and he's going to get to move quite a few uh, spaces. And I'm actually going to shove him and try to give him way up to that uh, marker up up on top there uh, for extra victory points. Again, we're coming close to the end. Now, I would also like to give a sprint uh, order here to uh, Private Walsh. However, Private Walsh is wounded, and wounded soldiers have some limitations on their movement. A light wound, which is what Private Walsh has, he cannot sprint. Okay, so I can't give him a sprint order. So instead, I'm going to have to give him a different movement order. And let me just think of which one I would like to give. Well, again, I can't give sprint. There's no need to give charge. And honestly, there's no need to give run and gun. So that leaves me with evade or sneak. Now, Evade is better than sneak because evade 
uh, allows me to move that character every impulse, whereas Sneak would not. And I want to get him up to here. Now, I'm, so I'm going to go ahead and issue an evade order for Private Walsh. All right, that leaves me with Private uh, Stubbs here for Charlie Team. Now, he's in good position. Of the five remaining characters on the board, he can already see three of them. And the other two aren't that far off. And so I'm going to leave Private Stubbs right there. And I'm going to give him an aimed fire order. I think that was the same I had him last time. And he's just going to shoot off into that area. So that's the end of Charlie Team. Looking at Baker Team, we've got issues with all three uh characters here. Uh, first off, Private Goldstein is out of ammo, and he does not have another um, weapon on him, so he can't fire. So either I give him a defensive or move order, or I am gonna can give him this order here, which is reload, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to issue the reload order for Private Goldstein. He's in the rocks, already so he's got some defense and if at the end of the turn he still has that reload order he'll reload and remove the ammo marker and he'll be able to fire for the final turn but for uh, private johnson and private miller i'm not entirely sure what i want to do here um uh you know what we haven't done this yet and so I'm going to do it now. I'm going to give Private Johnson here an order we haven't used yet. And that order is the grenade order. Sorry, there, I'm trying. There we go. What this is going to do is it's going to allow Private Johnson to throw a grenade. And we'll get to see how that works. And I'm planning on throwing it up in this area here. Uh, and you can throw it out to four hexes from where he's at. So right in here somewhere is where it's going to be. So hopefully these guys move in a little bit. As for Private Miller, he's, he's bold, but he's also got a light wound, and I cannot have no firing in this area. But with his light wound, that's already a minus one firing modifier. And so the three choices here really are run and gun, aimed fire, rapid or rapid fire. I could also do suppression fire, but I'm not interested in suppressing really. And I'm not sure if I want to give him, which one of these I want to give him. On the one hand, giving him run and gun puts him in the rocks and allows him to then fire. But it also forces him to move one more time, and I don't know if I want to do that. Aimed fire is good for obvious reasons, but he can only see that soldier there. On the other hand, there's at this point no danger because that soldier is also out of ammo unless he gets a, a grenade order. Uh, rapid fire would let him hit, uh, fire multiple times, but again with a penalty. And if I'm going to have a penalty, I'm also going to have him be able to move into some defensive terrain. So I'm going to give him run and gun, and he's going to move up into the rocks most likely. Uh, we'll see where it goes, and so we'll go from there. So we've got orders for all six of our friendly soldiers, and we're ready to move on to the next step, which is the enemy cards and order phase. And again, we've got five enemy characters left on the board, three red, two blue, and they'll all take a card draw. And I'm going to start with red, and I'm going to start with this character here. He's cautious, and he's in cover in the rocks. So let's take a look at what it says. In cover, cautious, hide. Now, this is significant in the fact that he also is out of ammo. By hiding this turn, he's not going to be able to get ammo for the next turn. And how that happens, how a, a, an enemy character reloads, 
is if he would have received a fire order, it would have automatically been changed to a reload order. Additionally, this is the first red, so the red team will have an initiative of 51. So I'll go ahead and place that in the initiative track, and I will give this soldier a hide order. All right, we'll come over here to this soldier. He's in cover, but he's got normal morale. So let's take a quick look. In cover, normal morale, he's get a sneak 1-6 order. All right. That means he's going to move, but slowly, and to the left and down. Well, more, mainly to the left. There's a sneak 1-6. Let me get it out of the tray. There we go. And then finally, the last red character, he's also in cover with normal morale. He gets rapid fire. All right, so he's going to be able to shoot. Uh... He'll be able to shoot every impulse, but the rapid fire order, remember, comes with a minus two dice roll modifier. Well, that's the end of red team. Now we need to go ahead and do blue team. We've got just these two enemy characters left in blue team. One is has no extra markers. The other one has light wound and low ammo. Uh, the one up above behind the rocks is in the cornfield and that's not in cover and normal morale so he's in the open normal morale he gets a five six c let's see if he's within four hexes one two three four nope it's only four not uh, five not four so that doesn't uh, give us a chance for a charge so he's going to get a sneak five six order and in addition this was the first red card with an impulse now of 77. So we'll play that on, on the track. I'm sorry, blue card, not red. And he gets a sneak 5-6 order. Whoops, that's run and gun. I don't need run and gun, I need sneak. <clears throat> Almost gave him the wrong order. And that was uh, sneak 5-6. All right, now we go to this character here. Uh, he's in cover in the rocks. And he's normal morale, but he's also a light wound, which means he cannot get a sprint order. So normal, in the rocks, in cover, that's a sneak 5-6 order as well. Uh, boy, this, uh, this turn has the uh, lookings of a turn that's going to go very quickly. Because in looking here now very quickly, with all five enemy characters having orders none of them are fire oh actually this guy's rapid fire so maybe we'll get something going on there all right let's go ahead and update our initiative track our uh, initiative values for this turn is Charlie company with 36 and they'll go first then we've got red at 51 followed by Baker at 70, and finally Blue at 77. So all four impulses this turn will be uh, Charlie team, Red team, Baker team, Blue team. So let's get that going. Let's get that played out. So we'll start. We're starting with Charlie team, and I'll start here with Private Walsh. He's got an evade, so he needs to move, and he's just going to move up into the cornfield again his goal is to eventually get to here next up we'll do uh, Corporal Thomas he's got a sprint to order and I'm I, his goal is to eventually get up there and so I'm just gonna move him out into this cornfield uh, with us he's got a one in his uh, impulse box <clears throat> private Stubbs has aimed fire which is zero for the first impulse so that's the end of Charlie team. We now go to red team. We have three characters for red team. This character here is hide, which is zero, so he does nothing. This character here is sneak, which for the first impulse is zero, which leaves us with this character here who has rapid fire. Okay, uh, there are, he can see both of these friendly characters, so they're both eligible to be shot at. And that's one, two, three, four, 
five. So with a five range, we need to figure out which one is easier to hit. Private Goldstein is reloading in the rocks. So he's got a minus five modifier. Uh, additionally, there is a, an additional marking here in the uh, terrain chart, which is an M, and that means any hit would actually just be a morale check rather than a hit, but it's minus five. Over here, we've got Private Johnson, who's still in the building with a grenade order. Taking a look here, grenade in a building is a minus one. And so, Private Johnson's going to be easier to hit. And you know, I know I've already fired, uh, I believe, from here at Private Johnson, but I'm going to check line of sight just one more time. And you know what? There is no line of sight. And so I maybe have screwed that up, but I'm going to fix that mistake right now. There's no line of sight. It goes right through the hedge, meaning Goldstein is the only potential target. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a range of five using the uh, car 98K. You know what? Let me just check here real quick. If he's using the car 98K, he can't use rapid fire. I'm 99% positive on that. Let me just check that here real quick. Yeah, it has to be replaced with aimed fire if he's using a car 98K. And I think I might have screwed that up earlier in, in the game too. And if so, I apologize. So, I will replace that with aimed fire. And since it is aimed fire, in the first impulse it's a zero and he has nothing going on. So that's the end of red team. We now have Baker team. All right, Private Goldstein has reload, so he does nothing. Uh, Private Miller has run and gun with a movement one. And so I'm gonna move him into the stones, uh, rock, so he has better defense. That leaves me with Private Johnson and the grenade order. Now, this will be the first time we've seen the grenade order in this playthrough. Uh, the box on the order says a black zero, don't do anything. But, there is something that's actually done here. In Impulse 1, we place a grenade marker on the character. And from this point forward, that grenade is live. And so let me just find a grenade marker. I forgot where I hit him. Where did they go? Here they are. No, that's not it. Although I will need that perhaps here in a minute. Is this what I'm looking for? No, here we go. Here's a grenade marker. And so I will go ahead and place this grenade on Private Johnson's uh, character. And that grenade is now considered live, which means should something happen to cause Private Johnson to not be able to throw his grenade, that grenade's going to blow up right where it is. Hold on here just a moment. I should have also have placed a target hex when placing the grenade order. Uh, this can be up to four hexes away. So I'm going to put that target hex right here. That's where eventually I want Private Johnson to throw the grenade. But that's the end of his first impulse. And that's the end of Baker team. And so now we'll move on to the blue team. We've got two blue characters. This is the first one. He's got Sneak, which is zero. He also has Sneak, which is zero. So that's the end of the blue team phase, the blue team impulse, and the end of the first impulse totally. So we'll move on now to the second impulse. Again, we'll start with Charlie team. We're going to start here with Captain or Corporal Thomas. He's now got a two, move of two, so I move him further through the cornfield. And I'm going to move Private Walsh one more 
up with his evade move. However, Private Stubbs now can fire. And I'm going to have him fire at the hiding uh, red character in the rocks. It's a 1, 2, 3, 4 distance of 5, so there's no modifier there. Hiding in the rocks is a minus 5 modifier, and if it's a hit, it's only a morale check. Taking a look quickly at Private Stubbs, the markers, all he has no other modifier, so it's a minus 5. He's got a troop quality of 5, so therefore, I'm sorry, a weapon skill of 5. So therefore, it's a two-hit number of zero. And he rolls a zero, believe it or not. Now, a couple of things happen here. Remember, when you roll a natural zero when firing, your morale goes up. And so, Private Stubbs's morale goes up to bold. Secondly, this is a hit. Normally, I would then go ahead and choose a card and look at the wound uh, values, but because... The, the enemy soldier is hiding in the rocks, the only possible result of this hit is a morale check. And so I will go ahead and check this soldier for any modifications to his morale. And the only thing he has is a shaken morale. So that's a minus two modifier on an initial five. So he's got a three or less to, to survive this morale check, and he gets a five. So he does not pass the morale check. And failing a morale check is a minus one modifier. And going down from shaken, down one level, let me just look this up to be absolutely certain, it is, it's route. And so he becomes routed. And so we may get to see how that works here. I'll remove his shaken modifier. I'll put down a route modifier. He's still got his hide order at this point, and he's still got his out of ammo. Now, when a character routes, and I may or may not have said this previously, there are very few things he can do. And there are very specific things that have to happen in order for him to do anything else. Specifically, he normally will just move. However, that doesn't happen until the next turn. So for the rest of this turn, these three impulses, his unless he had a move order, his current order uh, stays active. So he's going to still hide for the rest of this turn. That's the end of... Charlie team. We'll move on now to the red team. We've got the character that was just hit with hide. We'll leave him there. We've got this character here with aimed fire one. And he can now see two soldiers. He cannot see Private Johnson, remember, the one who's getting ready to throw the grenade. But he can see Goldstein and he can see Miller. They're both the same distance, so let's check the modifiers. Private Miller is running and gunning, and he's in uh, rocks. That's a modifier of minus two. Private Goldstein is reloading in the rocks, and that's minus five. So it actually will be shooting at Private Miller. Uh, he's got a car 98K. It's a range of five, so there's no range modifiers. Again, we just check the terrain modifiers and running and gunning. In rocks is a minus two modifier, so we're at minus two. And this soldier has no other modifiers, and his weapon skill is three. So we have three with a minus two modifier, meaning it takes a one or less for a hit. And we roll a four, so that's a miss. We have one more red character, and that's this character here who is sneaking one. And one puts him right here, right in the same hex as the grenade target. I don't know how I had that, maybe like that. All right, so his turn is done, or his impulse is done. We now go to Baker team, these guys here. 
He's reloading, so he does nothing. He's got run and gun. I'm actually going to have, he can see all three, but I'm going to have him shoot out here at the aimed fire soldier. Uh, it's an aimed fire in tall grass. So let's look at the modifier for that. Uh, that's a zero modifier. We've got, uh, there's no range modifier here. Run and gun is minus two. Light wounds is another minus one. So that's minus three on the modifiers. He's got a weapon skill of four. And so that will make a uh, two hit number of one. So he needs a one or less, um, a one or a less, and he rolls a four, so that's a miss. All right. So the last soldier here that needs to have anything done is Private Johnson with his grenade. Now, in the second impulse for a uh, friendly character grenade order, <clears throat> on this impulse, I either have the option of moving a single hex or uh, I can pass a troop quality check to move the grenade marker one hex. Um, I'm actually going to move him, and I'm going to move him up into the hedge. I'm doing that because he can only actually, even though this is his target, he can only actually throw a grenade three hexes. And so he's now, uh, his target is now within his range. And he can't do anything else. No spotting, no uh, uh, duck back, if that were something I was looking at. So that's the end of Char uh, Baker team. We now go to our blue characters, and there's two of them. First one is we have a sneak in the five direction, so he comes down here. And we have a sneak in the five direction, so he also comes down here. Right now, we've got two guys in our grenade hex, so who we can maybe... Uh, do some damage here. And that's the end of blue team. And that's the end of impulse number two. We're just going to plow right through and go to impulse number three. Normally I stop here, but we're going pretty quickly. So we start over with Charlie team again. And again, Private Walsh is just going to move one hex. And Corporal Thomas will move two. One, two. Now, Corporal Thomas has a sprint order. And he just moved into the hedge. You may recall earlier, uh, I stated that if you have a sprint order and you move into rough terrain, and a hedge is indicated as rough terrain, your order immediately changes to duck back. And so I'm going to do that with Corporal Thomas. But that's okay. He's close enough to get to that space next turn, which is exactly what I was looking for. All right, and this being Impulse 3, Private Stubbs has nothing he can do. So let's go to the Red Soldiers. Uh, this guy is first, height of zero. This guy has aimed fire, which is also zero. And he's got sneak, which is zero. So that's the end of Red Team. We now go to Baker Team. We have reloading, so nothing happens. We have running and gunning. You know, I'm going to move him into the logs. I don't know why. He has to move, so I'm just moving him into the logs. But we now have uh, Private Johnson and Impulse 3 for the grenade. And for grenades and Impulse 3... Uh, the friendly character actually throws the grenade up to a maximum of three hexes. I can place a grenade marker in the target hex, and then I also remove the target. And so I do that. I've moved it up here three hexes, so the grenade has now been thrown, and I'll remove the target. Uh, there's no need uh, to have that any longer. Now, in addition... I need to roll a d10 for each of the characters in the hex. And the reason for that is is twofold. Number one, there is the result, there is the possibility of what's called grenade scatter. 
Um, and that's what we're looking at here. When I roll this 1d10, if it's a 9 or more, the grenade scatters. We roll, it's an 8, so the grenade does not scatter. And by scatter, I mean it, go, it would go one hex uh, around it somewhere based on a d6 and the compass heading. So that didn't happen. All right, then we need to make a, a roll against the grenade thrower's weapon skill for grenades. And I don't know if we've talked about this, and so I'll show it to you. On his mar uh, uh, marker, not only does he have a weapon skill, and I'll be darned, that's a bar, but I've been playing it as uh, M1. He's got a weapon skill, which is three. That's his grenade weapon skill. All right, but he's also got a minus two uh, because of his morale. So he's got a grenade weapon skill of one. What we do is we roll uh, 1d10 with normal terrain modifiers for every character in that hex. So we've got sneak. They're both sneak in the open. <clears throat> and let me just look up their firing modifiers. Sneak in the open is a minus one. So we've got a minus one modifier which means his, modify, his modified grenade throwing skill is zero. If Private Johnson passes that check, meaning he gets a zero, we would place what's called a grenade near marker. If, on the other hand, it's, a, it's not passing, we would get grenade far. And the difference is, as you'll see this here when we look at the chart, when the grenade actually explodes, different values for hits and, and damage. So we'll do the top character first. That's an eight. We'll do the bottom character, the red character. That's also an eight. So they both uh, will get grenade far markers. And I'll just show you those here real quick. This is what a grenade near marker means, meaning basically there's a grenade right on top of you. And here's what a grenade far means. It's there's a grenade slightly further away. So they both get grenade far markers at this point. Additionally, though, they're both going to move here in a few seconds before that grenade explodes. And so uh, we'll see what happens then. Um, that's basically it for Private Johnson. And again, I'm just going to reiterate, Private Johnson has a bar rifle on his card. That's what I should have been using for him, and technically I shouldn't have picked him to begin with. I didn't know that. I've been playing him with an M1, so it really doesn't matter. All right, so that's the end of Baker team. We now do the blue team in Impulse 3. Uh, sneak and sneak, they don't move. So that's the end of Impulse 3. We'll move on now to Impulse 4. And this will be the final impulse of the turn. Again, he's just going to move for Charlie team. He changes his order to hide. He has an aimed fire chance. And I'm actually going to have him shoot at uh, this character here to see if he can't maybe force him to duck back into the hex with the grenade. The uh, hex distance is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 with an M1, so there's no range modifier. He's sneaking in the open, which is a minus 1 modifier. Looking again at Private Stubbs, he has no other firing modifiers. His weapon skill is 5. Minus 1 is a hit number of 4. We roll, it is indeed a four, so there is a hit. And again, we're on the red character. So we pull, it's a light wound. First thing we do with a light wound hit is we put a light wound marker on the soldier. Second thing we do is we remove his current order, which is sneak, and we replace it with 
a duck back order. What this, what this wound actually does, regardless of what else happens here on the wound morale check, is that it's going to force that soldier to stay where he is for the grenade. His troop quality is 4 with a minus 1 modifier, so he needs a 3 or less for the wound, mod for the wound morale check. He gets an 8, so he does not pass that. And that's a minus 2 morale level. Now, he was at normal morale. That takes him to shaken with a minus 2 modifier. But he's still good to go because his, or his overall troop quality level right now is minus 3. So that's the end of Private Stubbs, and that's the end of Charlie Team. We now go to the Red Soldiers. He's hiding. He's ducking back, which changes to a hide and does nothing. And he's got aimed fire. All right, now he can see either of these characters. Um, and it's going to be Private Miller is the easiest to hit. That's a distance of six, which is no range modifier. Private Miller is running and gunning in the open. That's a minus one modifier. The order for the soldier is aimed fire and a weapon skill of three. So with a minus one modifier he needs a two or less. And he gets an eight so he misses. And that's the end of the red impulse and the red turn. We now go to Baker Company. Or Baker Team. Again reload nothing happens. Run and gun he's got a one fire order. And I'm going to have him fire at the blue character in the grenade hex. Again, hopefully hitting him to stop him from moving. So that's a one, two, three, four, distance of four, which with an M1 is no range modifier. He's sneaking in the open. That's a minus one modifier. Additionally, we've got a light wound. So that's minus two, and run and gun is minus two. So that's minus four on a weapon skill of four, which means he needs a zero or less, or zero. And it comes up two, so that's a miss. That leaves us with Private Johnson and impulse four on a grenade order. Now, on impulse four of a grenade order, the friendly character may move an additional hex. This is optional. And I'm actually going to have him move, and I'm going to have him move back into the building to avoid being, to give him greater defense. All right, that's the end of Baker team. We now do the blue team. We have sneak six, which is in this direction. And we have another sneak six, which is in this direction here. Now, he had a grenade near marker. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what happens here. So, let me just take a quick look. I don't think it goes with him because he's no longer in the grenade hex. And so I'm just going to uh, make a, a decision here to remove that grenade near marker. Uh, we'll check that later, perhaps, on Board Game Geek with the designer. All right, that's the end of... The action phase, or action step, so we now go to our end of turn step where, for the most part, we haven't really done a whole lot. But if you'll recall, the very first thing to do in step five, the end phase, is have any grenades on the map explode. And we do indeed have a grenade on the map at this point. So here's how this works. Um... First off, grenades, like every other weapon, have a chart. Here is the chart for the grenade. The, this is the Mark II frag grenade for uh, friendly forces. It has a range of three. Remember, he's at four right now, but he moved up to throw it and then moved back. And then we've got damage and frag and smoke. Now, the difference here is that damage is the number of rolls to make. <clears throat> In this case... It's three and one. Now what the difference there is, is that the first number is if you have a grenade near marker, 
The second number is if you have a grenade far marker. That's why we did that roll, and that's why that was important, that it's a grenade far. So in this case, because it's a one, he's only going to roll one time. If it had been a grenade near marker, it would be rolled three times. The other number, frag, is what you have to roll in order to achieve a hit with each of those rolls from damage. And again, it's grenade near, grenade far. In this case, grenade near, you would need a four or less. A grenade far, you would need a two or less. All right? So we're going to be rolling one attack with needing a two or less. And we roll and we get a six. So that is a miss. The grenade does not hit. Or at least it does not hit this red character. And we'll go ahead and remove the grenade far marker. We're going to leave the grenade marker there for just a second, and you'll see why. Additionally, though, with the hex a grenade was in, any character adjacent to a grenade when it explodes must take a morale check, whether they're wounded or not. So this blue character right here must take a morale check. And we'll see what happens. He's got a normal troop quality of five. He's got a light wound modifier of minus one, so it's down to four. He's taking a morale check and needing a four or less to pass. He gets a seven. He does not pass. And that means his morale goes down one level to cautious. So the character in the same hex as the grenade, he's fine. The character who moved out of the way, his, his morale was shaken a little bit. And so he goes down to cautious. All right. That's grenades. That's how they work, but we're still not quite done with the grenade here yet. Once we're done with the grenade step, we go to uh, medics. There were no medics. There was no uh, plan orders. And here's the next and last step. We're going to add smoke markers to the map. And again, if you look at the grenade marker, it tells you how many smoke markers to place. In this case, we're going to have just one smoke marker. That smoke marker, and we'll take a look at it here. You'll see it's got a minus one leadership, a minus four troop quality, but it also has uh, uh, viewing. And that's really what that minus four is for. So we put the smoke marker in place of the grenade. Now, uh, next turn, if, we ha if that number was greater than one, we put another smoke marker in the direction of the wind. Uh, once all smoke markers are placed, the next turn, you flip the smoke marker to its backside, which is fading smoke, and then you start removing the smoke markers one at a time. All right, so uh, continuing on now with our end of turn. Um, no waiting soldiers. We'll remove all the orders. And the smoke marker stays with the hex, not the soldier. That smoke marker would be there even if there was no character there. Okay, we've removed all of our orders. And we're just about done with the turn. We put the impulse marker back to one. We remove our initiative track markers. It's not the last turn, but next turn it will be. Uh, we turn, put the turn marker up to seven, and we discard our cards. And that, that is the end of turn number six. And we'll be back with the seventh and final turn in just a second.